It is finally time for the finale of Love is Blind season six. And unfortunately, at the very top of the episode, another couple bites the dust. What's up, you guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, do make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on a single reality TV show recap or celebrity news. So which couple bites the dust before we get to make it to the altar? None other than Chelsea and Jimmy. The two of them sit down for their final dinner. Remember, we left off on a collection cliffhanger ending in episode 11 when Jimmy asked Chelsea if she could see herself marrying him and she seemed a little bit hesitant well guess what when we pick up this episode she tells him that she can see herself marrying him and he responds by telling her that he doesn't want to go to the altar which I feel like was rather rude on his part I feel like if that's how he felt he should have started off that way rather than testing Chelsea and having her look stupid professing her love to him before he dumps her for good. His issue basically is that she keeps on telling people that Amy and Johnny are the strongest couple they are, as if she doesn't believe in their relationship at all, which I do think he has a point with. It's a very strange thing to say when you guys are all looking to get married. Like, oh, they're so strong. They're definitely gonna get married. Who knows about us? Like you're kind of making a mockery of your relationship and of marriage in general when you act that way. So at this point, Chelsea confronts Jimmy for dragging it up until the last minute. Like she's like, we have been choosing like wedding songs, reception songs earlier in the day. Why didn't you say it then? Why are you waiting until this very point? You know, and so she's telling him that she feels like he never actually wanted to marry her and that he didn't even try in this relationship, which is completely unfair. Chelsea, you're just a very difficult person to be with from what I'm observing. And it does look like Jimmy genuinely tried with you. And he says as much. In fact, one thing that really threw him off outside of the Johnny and Amy comments was the way that Chelsea brought up the fact that he was boning his friend on camera. It was something he told her specifically off camera. And Chelsea acknowledged that he told her, do not say this on camera. And um, she threw it in his face over there. She's like, now you embarrass my friend. And um, that could impact her future relationships and stuff. So like, that was a hard line in this. So at this point, Chelsea says, well, you know, I always want to bring up problems in the relationship to you, but you blow up and you, t you take everything out of like proportion. And he's like, like when? Like when? And so at this point, Chelsea doesn't have any answers at the top of her head. So she's like, oh, well, you know what? Like with this friend, you talk too much. Like it's just too weird. Like it's inappropriate. And then Jimmy's like, well, what about you? You have an ex that's even more recent than my situation with my friend that you talk to all the time. Who did you FaceTime when we got engaged? Your ex. And I was like, wow, not Chelsea being a full blown hypocrite. This is crazy to me that she would FaceTime her ex to announce her engagement. And then she's upset that her fiance speaks to his friend like you know on a regular basis it's just very very strange to me like this couple I'm happy they're breaking up at this point because there was no way that this marriage would have been healthy at all and uh Chelsea says that she feels like Jimmy didn't want to marry her because he feels like she's a clingy person and she's brings up the time that he called her clingy and said that she needs to kind of chill it on the like sex too and Jimmy denies saying that he doesn't remember it which listen all right but I clearly remember you saying it Chelsea remembers you saying it and everybody watching this video remembers you saying it as well and so he's like you know how can I trust you Chelsea like the fact that you would put out my deepest darkest secret on TV like why why can I trust you and you know what Chelsea said and she kind of ate a little bit she said oh your deepest darkest secret is banging your friend I was like it's a good question like that's not a really a deep dark secret you know to me it's kind of to be expected again which is why I don't date guys who have like close female friendships and stuff you know like their besties a girl well peace out not my vibe you know what I mean so oh my god now what are we down to at this point you guys two couples I think it's only AD and Clay which we know is not gonna work out and then there's Johnny and Amy which is very likely to work out at the altar so um Let's get into those couples, right? Cause it's already done between Chelsea and Jimmy. Chelsea picks up her little cardigan and walks off. I was like, girl, get some of that cheese and the grapes too, to go. I would have put that in my pocket. So just to be like, <laughs> you know, on my way out. Now, Amy and AD and Clay and Johnny, they're having their separate bachelor and bachelorette parties. Like the girls have theirs together and the guys have theirs together. And it all seemed like a good time, but I don't care about these. this part of Love is Blind. By the time that these episodes roll around, I'm exhausted. I'm done with the show and I just want to get to the end and see who says what, you know? So I have to admit that I did 
fast forward through most of it. And then towards the end of the bachelorette parties, um, Amy and AD are talking about how Amy and Johnny still haven't consummated their engagement. And AD doesn't believe it. And she's like, oh, you know, I feel like she's just saying that, but like, you know, I, I can't imagine buying a car without test driving it first, which I totally agree with. I personally don't think it's a great idea to marry someone you haven't like hooked up with just because you know, you'd be surprised how many people are not great in bed and you wanna be stuck with that. Or the equipment is just not up to par, like, no thank you. Um, but anyway, I do want to ask you guys, because this is the first time that someone has ever expressed doubt about AD and Johnny being abstinent. Personally, I believe that they are being abstinent right now because Johnny seems to have a very, very huge fear that anytime you have sex, you're going to fall pregnant unless the woman's on birth control. Um, so I want to know what you guys think about that in the comment section, please. Now it's time for the wedding. We're going to start with AD's wedding, AD and Clay. And so you've got her mom tearing up, talking about all the sweet things that Clay's mom said to her about her daughter, AD. It was a very touching moment. And then we finally, when we go into the groom suite, we get to see Clay's trifling, dirty D slinging daddy. And I'm sorry, but I was underwhelmed. I'm like, really? This? All right. Um, I hated the till death do his part embroidery at the foot of AD's veil, you guys. I felt like it was too big. So it made it look a little bit bulky as opposed to elegant. Like the dress was stunning on her. Her body is crazy. And I like the veil outside of the till death do his part sort of thing at the very end. Um, and I do also have to nitpick about her jewelry. It was driving me nuts because she had these like diamond earrings. And then she had a gold nose ring and a pearl necklace and a gold bracelet. I said, Jesus, be a sense of style. What the hell is this? Just mixing every like different stone and type of jewelry. It was, it was too much for me. It was really bothering me because it, you know, anyway, that's too much. Let's move forward. Um, I do like as though that AD decided to walk herself down the aisle. Remember her father has passed away and she was considering maybe having her brothers walk down the aisle with her but then ultimately she decided to go ahead and do it herself i say good for you listen it's tradition i know but the tradition is rooted in the idea of women as property so i love when women decide you know what i can walk myself down I, no one needs to give me away because i am not property you know what i mean not that other women who have men give them away at their weddings like see themselves as property or anything like that but i just like you know when a woman decides you know what, I'm not gonna do it, F that. I'm gonna change it up. So now she and Clay both seemed really happy at the altar. They seemed nervous, they seemed excited. So for a little bit, I was like, oh, like, could this be? Will they actually say yes? But then they started talking and I'm like, this sounds like homies, like cutting it up. You know, they were using so much slang. They were like, oh, look at the body, look at the material, look at me, ow, 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 not you looking good, like stuff like that. I was like, this doesn't feel romantic. This feels like just buddies chatting, you know? So at this point, I'm like, no, it's not going to happen. These two are not going to get married. Um, and so this is where I get disappointed because AD is the first one asked to answer whether or not she will or will not marry Clay. And my girl, Boo Boo the Fool, said, I do. I said, what the hell? Why would you say I do to this man? He has been telling you from the very beginning, even before you got engaged, that he is not about nothing. He is shallow. He is incapable of marriage. Like, what is this, you know? Um, and he just, every time you hung out with him, he was telling you that he knows he's gonna cheat you, on you and he keeps fighting the, the urge that's like hanging over his shoulder, telling him to cheat on your ass. That's what you're saying I do to? Like, God, self-esteem in the gutter. I'm sorry. So now it's Clay's turn to answer the question. And he says, no, he does not want to marry AD because he's not 100% ready for marriage. And he wants to give her the best in a relationship. And then he's like, you know, like, but like in a relationship, you could totally fight for me. And I'm like, girl, why were you attracted to this man? This is how he has been speaking from the beginning about you fighting for him. Why should you fight for a man, especially Clay? Like, what? who wants to hear this? Honestly, Good for Clay for shutting this down because it was just a whole mess. AD, I'm sorry, girl, but you were giving bird up there on the stand. Um, so at this point, uh, he, he's still standing there in front of all their families and friends. And he asked her the same question he has already asked her twice while they were engaged, which is, why does it matter so much like this date? We don't have to get married on this date. Why does it matter? 
girl, you sh this is why you listen to men when they show you who they are or anybody. Like they tell you the truth from jump, you know? Like she could have saved herself all the heartbreak by saying no at the altar. So she goes, what the F Clay? And then she rolls out with her entire crew and she says that she's embarrassed. I'm like, girl, you embarrass yourself. He told you twice he wasn't ready for a marriage. And he told you literally every single date that there is a history of cheating. It is in his DNA. He's not capable of being faithful. What was there to say yes to? How desperate can you be? One thing that really touched me though was how Clay's mom made sure to hug AD on her way out as she, you know, went back down the aisle. You know, you could really tell that she loved and respected AD a lot. And so when she's back in her bridal suite, AD cries about how she's never enough. But the problem is that AD doesn't treat herself that like she's enough. She's not enough for herself. And when you are not enough for yourself, you are never going to be enough for other people because you're only going to be trying to convince people who don't see you or value you that you're worthy. And that's just not the way it should be. If AD was enough for AD, she would have never given Clay the time of day when he told her that he can't propose to someone he's never seen in the middle of an experiment about blind love, right? She would have walked away when he said that cheating is all he knows. You know, when you were enough for yourself, you say, I don't deserve that. Why, why the heck would I put myself in a position to get cheated on, you know, by a person who is incapable of real, true, faithful adult love. And when, Clay told her the first time or the second time that, you know, oh, who cares about the date? Like, I don't necessarily want to get married like on this date. I'm not ready for marriage. She would have walked away because she would have been like, you know what? I'm enough for myself. I don't need you. And I don't need all the baggage and BS that you come with. So she really needs to work on that before she continues dating because Clay did not blindside her. He didn't. He told her every single episode exactly who he was, what he was about and how damaged he is. She just chose to play, you know, play deaf to it all. And this is what it cost her. Now, when Clay does his confessional to the camera one-on-one, -on -one, he says that like, you know, he couldn't marry her because he wasn't deeply in love and he still doesn't really understand her financial situation. And then he goes to her suite to talk to her and tell her that he was struggling this whole time and that it would be irresponsible to say yes to be marrying, to marry her and be a half-ass husband, which is true. And he also says that AD is perfect and he's not rejecting her. And she asked what she's supposed to do now. I'm like, girl, like get, get a freaking backbone. What do you mean? What am I supposed to do now? The man told you he doesn't want to marry you. You pick yourself up and your boobs too. And you walk away, you, 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 you cry it out, of course, but then you move on with your life. That's what you're supposed to do. Like, I just, it, I'm sorry, it felt a little pathetic. What am I supposed to do now? Like, live your grown ass life. Like, what are you talking about, you know? I will say though, in Clay, in regards to Clay, I feel bad for Clay because Clay is a victim of his father's dirty dick. He really is because of his father and his father's filthy peen and the way that his father involved him in his filthy peen behavior by bringing him with him as a child to his booty calls, disturbing on so many levels. He has traumatized this man so much to the point where this man may never ever marry, may never ever be a faithful partner. You know, like that is some severe damage. And Clay seems like someone who wants to be capable of all these things, who dreams of being all of these things. But because of the damage that was done to him from childhood by his dirty D whore father, um, it might never happen for him. And that makes me sad for him. But here's the thing, he never hid that. He was so open about it to the point where it was a running joke almost on the internet. But this is real trauma, you guys. Like, and he really is a victim here. You know, should he see a therapist? Yeah, absolutely. But so should AD for hearing him consistently cry out for help about this and still want to marry him. Like, oh my God, you know? So anyway, um, what happens after there? Um, oh, we get the confrontation between Clay's mom and dad. Remember, they were married for 24 years before the mom finally decided to up and divorce his, you know, trifling ass. And this was one of the most profound moments in Love is Blind history to me, okay? So let me walk you through it. So his dad and mom are talking about how sad it is that he said no at the altar. And then his mom confronts his dad. She's like, you know what? Like you have damaged this child so badly that he may never be able to move forward. 
right? Like he is traumatized from your actions. And, um, you know, at this point, he's probably asking, is marriage for real? Or is it just something in which you lie and you deceive? And that's true. When you've got a father like Clay's father, you do ask yourself those sorts of questions, right? And then his dad starts crying about how he didn't have great role models in his life either. It's like, oh, shut up, shut up. When you have kids, you're supposed to decide to be better. You don't get to have kids, traumatize them and say, well, I was traumatized, so you deal with it. Like that is such POS behavior. And it's such a freaking cop out because guess what? It turns out his ex-wife Margarita also grew up in a broken home and she was fine. She wasn't out there thotting and bopping on the dad. So it's not a good excuse. Okay. And then the mom starts talking about how she discovered even more about the dad's disgusting, whorish ways throughout this experiment. Remember Clay talked about how he was sharing some stuff with AD that he had not shared with his mom yet. So I believe that he went back and shared it with his mom, you know, so that she wouldn't find out on the show with the rest of us. And so you could tell that she was just so freaking devastated by all of this, you know, like she, it's like she was being re-traumatized for the first time again. It really is a lot. And so hearing these stories about Clay, growing up with like a damaged father and his father growing up with a damaged father and then my uh, margarita growing up with damaged parents i'm like you know it really is sad what like american racism did to black families a lot of this is rooted in slavery a lot of this is rooted in um you know the civil rights segregation and all that stuff that was going on at the time it was very hard to just have a normal calm functioning family unit under those circumstances in which homes were split up people were bred like livestock and stuff like that you know what i mean and that stuff still it still lingers on in the way that people you know uh a lot of people are functioning in their current relationships and it really really does break my heart because you know when you think about these things you feel like oh this happened so long ago but no this is like people's great grandparents this is people's grandparents you know um when when, when was segregation and stuff i think it's still in the lifetime of, of some of our own parents too you know it was like the 60s up until if i remember correctly so it's still very recent stuff that you know just produce a lot of generational trauma. So my heart really does go out to all of these people. But um, I always say, just work on your trauma as much as possible before having kids. So you don't keep on repeating the cycle the way that Clay's dad did to him. So his dad then, after he does his little sympathy for himself cry, he says that, you know what? Clay just needs to meet a good woman like his mama. And then his mom, she's so point poignantly pointed out that the dad needs to save it. He's like, you know what? Okay you had a good woman and you didn't treat me right so now what you know like that's not what clay needs you know and i love that you know women are not rehabilitation centers for broken men clay needs to get himself together clay needs to get into therapy clay needs to work on his trauma before meeting another good woman because guess what ad already was a good woman you know who was ready to work through these issues with him but clay is not ready to actually face and work on these issues so i'm happy that the mom called that out and i feel like that part alone just made it so like powerful it really was one of the most beautiful scenes in love is blind history for me it just felt like a lot of vindication you know and just strength from clay's mom it was really really beautiful to me now back in the bridal suite you've got ad and clay talking and i don't know why ad was whispering no one's eavesdropping girl except me and the camera crew because <laughs> clay was talking at full volume and then ad's like i'm just not enough and then clay's like you are girl but i'm not ready to marry right now so it was just like ah, the volume so at this point ad cries on to us in her one-on-one -on -one confessional about always having to carry relationships and just not being enough and again she needs therapy to learn that she doesn't need to jump through hoops for a man of all things. And the problem starts and ends with her and what it is that she's willing to accept. If a man is not putting an effort to be with you, there's no point in being with that man. He's just not the man for you. Like you are putting yourself through all of this. And that's something that I really, truly need her to understand. So um, let's go on a more positive note. Let's pick things up a little bit here. Uh, it's time for Johnny and Amy's wedding. So we get to see more of his siblings. They all co completely look alike, which is really cute. And um, it's also cute how her family and friends were talking in the bridal suite about having like dreams about who Amy would marry. So one of her friends said that while Amy was in the experiment, she had a dream that Amy was married, uh, engaged to a blonde hot man. And then her dad apparently had a dream that Amy was gonna have some like strawberry blonde kids. Remember, Amy is a 
brunette with dark hair. So that would mean that she would be with someone with like lighter hair or whatever. So I felt like that was kind of beautiful. And so I'm sorry though, like I have to be a little bit of a hater here, but I hated John's wedding hair. Like he looked like Cody from Sister Wives to me. I, I didn't like it at all. Like usually his hair looks okay. I'm not particularly fond of long hair on white guys, to be honest with you. I just, I don't like it that much. Um, but it looked better than it did at this wedding. It felt like a very awkward like length for me, but I digress. So I gotta say, speaking of things I'm not typically fond of, I'm not typically fond of wedding tiaras unless you're an actual princess. But Amy's wedding tiara was absolutely beautiful with her dress. It was just whimsical together. And then they had all of these stunning, beautiful flowers as well. It was very, very, very beautiful wedding. And of course they both said yes at the altar as you would imagine. And then we get to talk about whether or not love really is blind. And at this point, Johnny says, yes. Like, and then we talk about like, would they have approached each other in real life? Well, Johnny says that he would not have approached Amy in real life because he would have assumed that she was way out of his league. So it's very interesting to hear that. You know what I mean? I really like that question. Now, um, so season six, and we only have one married couple which listen, it's not about the number of people. It's about just having authentic experiences at the end of the day. And I do feel like, like we got a lot of that. And I actually quite like that sometimes people call it quits before getting to the altar, because you know, what's the point of putting someone through so much heartache just to make it through to the altar at the end. And can I put out a little conspiracy theory for you guys? You know how people have been suing Love is Blind, claiming that their contracts are unethical and that producers threaten them with lawsuits if and fines if they quit the show early. I think maybe where they're overcorrecting here and that's why you see so many people who quit before they make it to the altar. They're trying to say, you know what? No, it's not true. These people were not forced to keep going through this psychological warfare. We weren't threatening them. Like, I think that's why they kind of like loosen the grip a little bit for things to flow more naturally here. And I feel like it's better for everybody at the end of the day than to feel forced into something that you just know is not gonna work for you, you know? So I do wanna know what you guys think about that. In fact, I'm gonna make a separate video about it because I do think it's a rather interesting topic, but it's a topic for another day. This video is already long enough. Uh, again, thank you so, so much for joining me throughout this journey all season. Don't forget their reunion is going to be coming out soon. I don't know when yet. Um, Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my recap of that. And then, of course, I'm going to be doing some individual character analyses as well, as usual. So uh, in the meantime, let me know what you thought about this finale episode and just everything that you've got on your mind. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.